Good morning and praise the Lord this wonderful day that the Lord has made for all of us. I'm excited to have this opportunity yet again to speak to us the Word of God. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription. For a couple of days now, we have been addressing the seven things that the Lord hates and does not tolerate or cannot tolerate. Today, we're going to yet a sixth item, and we're reading this from the Bible in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 6 and verse number 16 to 19. So the sixth item is a witness who tells one lie after another. A witness who tells one lie after another. Now, in the course of our uh, responsibilities, our duties, in the course of our engagements in business, in the course of engagement, even in ministry, a lot of things happen. And witnessing is an event or an occurrence that will be caught in one way or another. So either you are a witness to things that have exactly happened or somebody is using you to witness against something which is not true. Now, many times you go to hear matters. You hear matters that concern marriages, matters that concern even employees or anybody or individual who have been engaged in one item or an occurrence or another. And so in the course of life, we will be uh, uh, come across situations where we will have to appear as witness. Now, a witness is somebody who gives an account of events or something that happened in their sight. They were able to see, hear, and they, were, they can be able to give an opinion of what they exactly saw. Now, when, for instance, uh, there's an accident on the road, uh, they, there will always be people who are called upon to give an eyewitness account or report on how these events occurred. Now, if people want to get something which is undue for them, maybe it's an insurance, a cover, the discovering, you know, your vehicle or the other party's vehicle. Sometimes people give a, a report that is conducive to ensure that they are able to get their cover from insurance. Sometimes people give information which is inaccurate, incorrect, or utterly wrong for the purposes of getting something out of it. Now, this is an, as is a, uh, concerns an accident. But looking at life generally, we will be called upon to be witnesses on matters. Now, the Bible tells us a witness who tells one lie after another is something that God hates and cannot tolerate. In other words, we should always take a stand for the right thing. Take a stand for the correct thing. Be on the side which is true and correct. In other words, when you are witnessing, when you are called upon to give a report concerning a matter that you see, you know, or you have experienced, you should always be able to tell the truth as it is. What do I mean? That we should take a stand to witness things the way they are. It's even be better not to say a word than to say and lie. It's important for you to know, child of God, that the Lord hates and cannot tolerate a witness who tells one lie after another. Now, I've said before that if somebody is used to lying, and we say that lies are from the devil because he's the father of all lies. Now, if you are, you know, you want to lie, you would realize that you have to use another lie to cover the original lie. That means Lying becomes something that is spiraling, always there to cover what, and sometimes people forget even what they said yesterday. Now, this morning, I've come to encourage you, be a witness that will only speak the truth as it is. Now, these things happen in life. There are people who actually would have helped people by making marriages be sustainable, making marriages to stand, but they thought they, 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 they elected to be people who will tell a lie after another lie. When questions are asked, uh, did you see this thing? Do you know this thing? They pretend that they don't know anything about it. And this thing continues to grow. Remember when sin is, is when the sin becomes big, it matures and it grows and it can ultimately lead to death. So when we recognize that there's something which is going on that is wrong, we do not need to be witnesses by lying. We need to take situations head on, address them so that people are corrected. Sometimes truth is not comfortable. Truth sometimes is uncomfortable, but no matter the pain, 
No matter the discomfort when truth is brought on the fore, it helps people to get better. Nobody has ever gotten better by lying. Nobody has ever gotten the best of their life by lying. We have to be witnesses of truth. Indeed, we are witnesses of Jesus Christ. And so we speak about that which was recorded in the historical books in the Bible. And that's why we proclaim we are witnesses of Jesus Christ that he died and he resurrected. Now, lies have never been used to help anybody. As a matter of fact, they become a burden and they can grow and mature into death. So you need not to live a lie in your life. You need to live the truth of your life. Now, when you confront truth in your life, then your life would be a better life. I came to encourage you this morning, let you know that this issue of a witness who tells lie one after another is one that the Lord hates and cannot tolerate. Now, we need to know where we need to stand on the right side of God. This is my encouragement to us this morning. And I believe that for the last six days or so, the Lord has continued to speak to us about things that we have to change into our lives so that we can be able to appear before him as a people acceptable in his presence. Tomorrow we'll conclude as a final thing, the seventh thing. And I believe that after this series of this teaching, that the Lord is causing you to rise up in his power, to be an individual that he purposes you to be. Remember, God has got a plan for each one of us. He has got a purpose for your life. He has got a purpose for my life. There is a place that God is taking us to, and we must take responsibility of our lives to be able to be delivered to the place that God intended for us. I said, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 27, I bring my body under my subjection, that after I preach to others, I will not be disqualified. You need not be disqualified, child of God. You can take responsibility of your life. You can take responsibility of dealing with a thing that the Lord hates and cannot tolerate. So you can be on the right side of the king. And when you're on the right side of the king, Bible tells us, if God be on our side, who can be against us? Now, if God be on your side, it means he'll take up your battles. He'll take up your wars and you will win even without fighting. Remember the story of King Jehoshaphat? I preached here seven days ago. You need to know that when God is on your side, you will conquer every single battle that will be laid before you. I have come to encourage you this morning to let you know that our master in heaven has got a basic and proper plan for your life. I don't know what your condition is this morning. I know there are people who are struggling, uh, people who are unwell, people who are you know, financially depleted. I want to let you know that the Lord is still on the throne. The Lord still cares. The Lord is still concerned with you. And he can open a door for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to pray this morning that the Lord Almighty will open extraordinary doors for you and that you'll be able to give testimony about what it is that the Lord can do. I'm excited for you this morning, and I believe that the Master will continue to bless you more than you can ever imagine. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you this morning. We glorify you because you're great, you're mighty, you're awesome, and you are an absolutely amazing God. Father, this morning I thank you, Father, that you will help us not to be witnesses of lies, but that we'll be able to take a stand for the right side and for truth in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, I know there are people who are going through situations in their lives. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that, Father, your glory, your power, and your anointing will be able to come down and rescue us, O oh God, for the glory of your name. We commit this day in your hands. That this will be a day of miracles in the name of Jesus. May your grace, may your anointing be seen in our lives, in the mighty name of the Lord. I give you glory and I honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you so much. This has been your host, Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the TSP, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are blessed beyond measure. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning by the grace of God. Shalom. In Jesus' name.